The arrival of ETFs on the investment scene has also meant the arrival of new and oddball asset classes that investors in previous eras had difficulty accessing. And that's especially true of popular S&P 500 volatility yardsticks like the VIX. Today's ETF battle is between a pair of VIX products from Barclays Bank and ProShares. So what's the better trade for investors that want to capitalize on higher stock market volatility? Find out right after this. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge, and it's great to see you again. Keep your ETF battle requests coming. Hit us up with your ETF ticker symbols in the comments section below or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. Don't forget to punch the subscribe button along with the like button if you've been enjoying the program. Now, by the way, if we choose your suggested ETF battle, you win your choice of an ETF Battles coffee mug or a shirt. You decide. So stock market volatility has been high this year, but it still has been relatively low compared to peaks during other major bear markets like the dot-com crash and the great financial crisis. And so if you think that volatility has room to go higher, I think that you're going to enjoy today's ETF contest. So we've got a battle between two VIX-linked ETFs. Well, actually, one of them is an ETF. That's ticker symbol VIXY from ProShares. The other is actually an alien object called an ETN also known as an exchange-traded note. VXX is the ticker symbol for that one, and that's from Barclays Bank. So which is the better trade for volatility-focused traders? Well, judging today's contest is Mike Akins with ETF Action and Meb Faber with Cambria Investment Management. It's Meb's first time on ETF Battles. So warm welcome to you, Meb. We're looking forward to hearing your insights. It's great to have both of you on the show. It's great to be here. Good to be here, Ron. Good to see you, Meb. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then mystery. I've got the scorekeeping chores, and at the end of the program, we're going to declare an overall winner based upon the analysis provided by our judges. Now, keep in mind, our judges can do split decisions. They can nominate wild cards. It's completely up to them. And uh, quite frankly, the more chaos we can have per capita on the program, all the better. Uh, none of the ETF battle outcomes, by the way, are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or the judges. So let's kick things off with the first category, cost. Mike, which of these two products stands out to you? Well, as is often the case, Ron, in these, these battles of more niche products, um, I don't think cost is a big determining factor in this battle. That being said, um, these are trading vehicles. Um, you should never be holding these for the long term. So in that sense, you want to put a bigger... Um, evaluation on liquidity. And from that perspective, VIXI, V-I-X-Y, is going to get you a little cheaper execution cost. And it's also on a total cost basis, 85 basis points versus 89, though that's immaterial in this battle cat setup. I think the determining factors really should be liquidity on cost. And in this case, VIXI is going to get you a little better um, execution as this is a trading vehicle. Thank you, Mike. That's a strong start. Meb, let's shift to you. How do you see it in terms of cost? No argument there. Totally agree. Um, there is a potential, I don't know if cost is the right category uh, for this discussion, but a potential, maybe the mystery category, but we'll talk about it here. Um, the potential headache cost of owning a fund that potentially will generate K1s, which would be Vixie, uh, but also the headache cost of owning uh, an ETN. And there's all sorts of complications with that as well. I mean, this whole entire category of inverse funds is littered with complexity and littered with high cost on just fees as well as these other factors. And so all those things need to come into play um, as people think about this, this category of inverse funds, which can be um, a huge flashing headlight of buyer beware. Thank you, Meb. That takes us next to exposure strategy. So this is where you get a little bit into the nitty gritty and you can talk also about the product structure and the differences. So Meb, you're still up. Give us your take. So a quick background prior, as you think about this category in general, you know, we're having an awful year in U.S. stocks and bonds. So it's front of mind for a lot of people. How do I hedge these big negative outcomes? And we've been on record plenty talking about 
U.S. stocks being overvalued, U.S. stocks now being in a downtrend, which historically is not a warm and fuzzy place to be. So these products are starting to get attractive. We actually wrote a paper called Worried About the Market. Maybe it's time for the strategy talking about this broad conceptual inverse equity strategy, what to do when, when it's hitting the fan with stocks. And the challenge being there's a lot of things you could do first, by the way. You don't have to own so many stocks in the first place. Okay, You don't have to put all your money in stocks. You can own diversifying investments. Now, the problem is a lot of those tend to uh, do poorly when stocks do poorly. So real estate, foreign stocks, commodities often do just as bad as stocks do in a big down month or down year. Um, gold is kind of like your crazy cousin. Sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. Bonds historically have hedged, but not always. And then you get into some active strategies. What do you do then? Okay, um, you can do uh, value help sometimes. It helped in the 2000 bear market, didn't help in the financial crisis. Um, trend following and managed futures helps. And then to me, only then do you get to some of these inverse strategies because almost by design, they're go and they're by VIX futures, essentially. It's usually the first and second forward front month. Um, and Mike can maybe correct me there, but I think both of these funds track either the same index or a very similar index. Um, and so by definition, you can't say guaranteed in our world, they should do really well when it's hitting the fan for stocks. The problem is always how much is it going to cost you in the good times? And if you look at the charts of these funds, we'll get into that performance, but um, it can be very expensive. So the process of owning these VIX futures, and Mike mentioned it, we'll probably elaborate as well, they end up being trading vehicles. And then like everything in life, you got to get the timing right. So which of these two ETFs do you choose or do you choose a split decision and no vote? I think it's a wash. Okay. It's a, it's a wash. It's a, for me, it's a, it's a wash with the, um, I don't know if, if this is in the exposure category, but of the product design, we should get into this at some point. Um, VXX being an ETN and what that actually means and the downsides of that. So if we're including that, I think Vixie wins with the process, although you get a K1, so it's kind of painful either way. Uh, so I'm going to pick Vixie, but kick it to Mike. At the end of the day, these, these strategies are tracking extremely similar um, indexes. So they're both tracking the near expiry. So the front month um, futures contracts in the VIX. Um, the difference, of course, being one's an ETN, one's um, an actual, <clears throat> not a 40 act product, but a 33 act product where they're using futures to actually do that. Uh, the ETN does have a little benefit in this exposure concept in that it is a contract to track an index and as a result, in theory, should track the results of the of the index closer because they can do it via a total return swap. Um, but at the end of the day, and we'll get into it in performance, that doesn't really make a big difference in these two products. Um, so from an exposure perspective, I kind of like where Mev went earlier, thinking about um, a K1 versus not getting a K1. Um, I'm thinking about this from a trading vehicle. If you're using these things, you've clearly got risk appetite. Um, I kind of lean, lean towards not getting a K1 at the end of the year if I'm trading in and out of this vehicle, which makes me think um, VXX versus Vixie using the ETN in, the, in this route. But it's really just a pure preference. Um, by and large, these are used by professional traders, and they're not used alone. You're not putting a VXX trade up by itself. You are doing it as some sort of combined trade with other product and other vehicles when one zigs, the other zags. Um, because as Meb said, you're going to get crushed if you think you're just going to time when volatility spikes and comes down in the marketplace. Um, so, you know, big picture, it's it's a big, it's a preference on, on this category for exposure. Um, I would note that this falls squarely in the alternatives bucket from a classification perspective. And there's some good alternative strategies out there this year that are performing quite well that are more of a buy and hold hedge inside of a portfolio, whether it be merger arbitrage, um, managed futures or merger arbitrage or different ways to think about hedging um, volatile times in the marketplace that don't absolutely get crushed if you hold it forever. Um, so that that's my take. I'm giving it to VIX just because K1s, I deal with enough of that um, and I just don't like them. So. That's my only reason. Perfect. So I got you down for VXX. Thank you, Mike. And maybe we'll hear some wild card nominations 
uh, later on in the program. We'll have to see what our judges get up their sleeves. That takes up next to performance. So performance, uh, you're still up, Mike. Give us your analysis. Yeah, so the number one thing is before you buy either one of these products, extend the chart out as far as it can go. Because I promise you at the end of the day, they both equal the same thing. You lose it all. Um, the, the cost to carry these vehicles is a zero sum game. You will eventually go to zero. You'll have periods of incredible performance, but if you hold this thing long enough, your return will literally be negative 100%. So with that disclosure in there, um, performance, I'm gonna give it a toss up. <clears throat> there is significant difference um, over time periods. And that really comes down to that structure question, that exposure question that we just had. So for example, Year to date, the ETN is doing much better um, than Vixie. So VIX is up 18% versus 12% for Vixie. But if you look at the one year, it's closer. And the three year, it's almost um, exactly the same. Um, the difference there in that return is really a compounding effect of rolling those futures. And that goes to the effect of one's doing a total return swap, a guaranteed return to the index. The other is actually trading to accomplish trying to track their index. And that can create some implied leverage in that process. Good, bad, indifferent. Um, if you can figure that out, maybe you should be using those products. My guess is most of you can't, and I suggest most of you don't use these products. So it's a toss up on performance for me. Thank you, Mike. That takes us next to Meb. How do you see it when it comes to performance? Yeah, I mean, reiterating what Mike just said, you know, um, a lot of people will look at year to date returns like catnip and be like, Oh my God, they're up 10 or 20%, whatever they might be. And then you zoom out and, and despite being up 10 or 20 this year, they are still down 80% from the peak, uh, from, from inception for, from the common, uh, trading. And so it's hard. Now the bigger challenge, um, you know, it, is can you identify periods when volatility will mean revert? And, you know, my general common sense thinking on this strategy, if you're going to try to time something like this, is you want to be buying it in general when volatility is lower, if you can help it. You don't want to be buying it when VIX is at 60, 80, 100, you know, if it gets there after the event has already happened. Um, which can really burn a lot of people. But in general, I think there's probably 20 steps to do ahead of time before thinking of these. But performance for, for these two is going to be washed. There's a slight kink this year that had to do with um, Barclays and the structure of an ETN. ETN is exchange-traded note. So that's different than an ETF. I'm curious to see if the SEC will eventually start to do some um, – regulation or uh, starting to categorize these funds differently. Um, but exchange traded note, you technically have credit risk to the issuer. And so I was actually trying to go on Barclay. Barclay made an announcement a few months ago where they started talking about their exchange traded notes and say, hold on, you know, we're going to pause some of these. Uh, I think they're talking about the creations. And to me, that's like a um, maybe a red flashing light, but it's it's definitely a yellow flashing light. Now, it's not saying Barclays is going to go out of business or, or no longer support these funds. But technically, if Barclays went under, you have credit risk to uh, to Barclays, right? Like it's unlikely, but it's technically true. And so a lot of advisors are squeamish about exchange traded notes. And then that announcement this year probably should give you pause and concern. Um, and on top of that, I tried to go on their website this morning, wasn't even working. So I'm not sure if that's just my incompetence as a, as a web user. But uh, if you go to Barclays iPass, it's like the, the entire website was down. So, um, you know, on the performance category, they both stink. You got to get the timing right, uh, which I think is, 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 is not an impossible task. I think there's times when it could be thoughtful, whether it's valuation based, whether it's volatility based or whether it's trend based. Um, but if I had to pick uh, because of the ETN structure performance. Um, I'm going to give it to uh, to Vixie. V I X Y. Thank you very much. I got you down for performance on that one. That takes us next to the mystery battle category, and this is where our judges can uh, give us whatever single factor or maybe multiple factors that they think are crucial to today's contest. So, Meb, what is your mystery battle category, and who wins it? The category for me is when you get to derivatives. There, there's a great phrase from. Ned Davis, where he says price is unique in that it's the only indicator that can't diverge from itself. And yes, VIX is correlated often to what's going on with stocks, but but not always. And 
Um, to me, if you're going to bet on something like stocks going down, bet on stocks going down. And so, uh, you know, this is an, I'm an ETF issuer. We literally launched a product because we were so frustrated with this entire category. I'm not going to mention it, but but my point being is this category is littered with complexity and high fees. And so the challenge with all the entire VIX complex to me is what you should be focused on is not necessarily what these funds are expressing, um, you know, and so cer certain types of inverse ETFs that put on the exposures differently, I would probably prefer to this. Uh, so the category to me is just purpose in general, um, you know, is, is a is sort of a whiff, but, uh, but if in the mystery category, um, for me on the voting on this cat on the, on the mystery is a, is a pass on both. Got you down for pass. Mike, you're up next. What is your mystery battle category and who wins it? So my mystery category is something nobody ever really spends any time looking at, but that's going to be the prospectus or in the case of VXX, the offering document. And if you're thinking about using these products and you can get through all of the pending litigation and or risk disclosures and still feel comfortable doing it, knock yourself out. But at least do yourself the favor of going and reading the offering document of the prospectus for both these products because it is littered with landmines that you should understand before you start using these products. Um, and by and large, both these strategies are a hard pass for me. Um, really not just from a retail perspective, but um, minus the most sophisticated kind of hedge fund strategies that are using it in conjunction with a role that are really just taking advantage of um, volatility in the marketplace with as a hedge, I just can't see it being in a model of any sort or even a tactical strategy for that that matter. So do your homework. All right, very good. So this uh, this ETF battle looks like it may end in a split decision of two losers, but I don't wanna put any words in the judge's mouth. So let's give our judges a final opportunity to weigh in with their overall choice. Mike, give it to us. Yeah, I can't do it, Ron. I'm not gonna give you a ticker here because somebody will like, save it and send it to me someday and be like, you said VXX is the better product. Um, yeah, I just, I don't, I think it's a, they're tactical tools and for, there are people that have made money using these products. Otherwise they wouldn't trade them over and over again. And I can tell you that if you look at an ownership of, of who owns these, it's not, you know, it's not littered with like most ETFs, the wire houses, the RIAs, it's littered with hedge funds and institutions that you may or may not have heard of. Um, as the ownership for these strategies. So to that extent, just, uh, you know, no winner for me, very complex category and buyer beware. Thank you, Mike. Meb, your final chance to weigh in with your overall winner, give it to us. Yeah, I echo Mike. I don't like either of these. So mine would be uh, a punt on both. However, if you said, Meb, choose the least worst, I would choose Vixie mainly because of the, the, the warning signs of the ETN structure and Barclays uh, sort of continued um, signaling that they may not be supporting or withdrawing from that space in the future. And the last thing you want to do is get stuck in a uh, liquidating fund or, per, or potential situation where it, it theoretically could decouple from NAV or something else going on. It's just, it's too, too hard pile. Well, our judges have spoken and today's ETF battle winner is... We got two losers, which is a first on ETF battles. That's never happened before. So today's been a historic program in that sense. Our judges made some great points. Um, obviously, the credit risk with VXX, you don't have that with VIXY, and that's a big deal. Um, that adds a complexity to the trade if the credit quality of that issuer, in this case Barclays, uh, goes um, you know by the wayside, then you're going to see that, uh, that ETF, ETN probably closely track the the debt, the corporate debt of Barclays, which is not why you bought the ETN in the first place. And we've seen this happen, by the way, before in, in the 2008 financial crisis, Lehman Brothers had several ETNs that went uh, belly up. So that's something to keep in mind. A um, couple other key takeaways. Uh, VIX ETFs are short-term tactical trading tools. If you're going to use them, they are not long-term buy and hold investments. I think our judges both emphasize that. Also, if you're buying and holding VIX ETNs or ETFs over long periods of time, expect totally unpredictable results 
just like the customer service in Europe, and, and you may not like that. And uh, finally, um, I just want to give a big thanks to both judges, uh, Meb and Mike, for outstanding analysis. Guys, keep up the good work. Thanks, Ren. Thanks a lot, bud. So be sure to visit the description section below for research links to our judges. Um, also, that white paper that Meb mentioned, we'll, we've got a link to that along with the uh, prospectuses. While you're there, be sure to check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. You'll also see viewer resources from us. We've got online classes and financial tools. Well, that does it for today's program. Which ETF battles would you like to see in our next episode? Post your ETF ticker symbols in our YouTube comment section or hit us up on Twitter at ETF Guide. If we choose your battle, you win your choice of a shirt or a coffee mug. I'm Ron DeLegge. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.